Hello, chat. Welcome in. We get to vibe. We get to vibe today, y'all. We are going to be mostly chilling. We're gonna we're gonna start off with some cosplay work. If uh if if I'm not if I run out of the cosplay work. Four month streak for another awesome Ayo. streamer. Thank you. Thank you for the four month streak. Can't wait. I almost ca calipon. <laughs> me when me when writing is me when reading is duh. anyways i can't read um anyways <laughs> we're gonna do cosplay things and then if i run out of cosplay things we're gonna go hang out on craft <laughs> but to start with the cosplay things before we get into silly little well okay it's not a silly D, &D story i will warn you there <laughs> but do you guys want to see the dress do you guys want to see the dress? It's done. I finished the dress today. Yesterday. Yesterday. So the dress itself is done. I will disentangle myself from my headphones. Bah, 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 bah. Ba -da -da. So. We'll bring her forward for some closer looks. The top has been redone. <laughs> the top has been added to with the pretty funky flower lace. The back has been redone to add a corset back and a panel that's being obnoxious right now, but has corset back now. And then the skirt has a ton of flowers. Huh. Yep, look at that. It took forever. <laughs> back here you can hang out in the background of the stream dress Ugh. so the dress <laughs> is wonderful and so now we got to go back to working on the puppet <laughs> the head of the puppet is done she done so we have the head of the puppet She's doing great. She looks fabulous. She needs a body. She needs a body. <laughs> so, uh, I have the mock-up of the body and shout out to the Hayes Band. Daniel has decided to learn how to use a sewing machine so that I don't have to. <laughs> Cause I don't like using a sewing machine. It's mean. I don't like sewing machines. I don't like the sound of them. I struggle with it. It messes with my auditory issues. Uh, so Hayes Band has uh, taken over the sewing machine parts. I usually just hand stitch stuff, but sometimes hand stitching is mean when the thing you have to sew is 11 feet long. <laughs> oh. But yeah, so this cosplay is uh, Dragon Zelda. Dragon, uh, the light dragon from the Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. And... Uh, it is going to go to Denver Fan Expo, which is the con I go to most often. And so, our starting task today, y'all, is filling the body mock-up. <laughs> I have about the tail length done. There's another five feet. <laughs> There's another five feet of body to fill. Uh, and so basically what I'm doing is I'm making the body as a mock-up. Cat bell ears. Oh, very well, very well. Cat ears we go. We've been cat eared. Let me find them. <laughs> Let me find them. Okay, I found one. Oh, there's the other one. Haha. <laughs> yeah, so the dragon's 11 feet long <laughs> because she's gonna wrap around the whole damn dress. Uh, it's gonna be wild. So, yeah, <laughs> this, <laughs> okay, wait, we're going to try that again. Oh, yeah, Boop. we can go like there on the headphones. Yeah, yeah, beep, beep, there you get them kind of on the headphones. <laughs> part of this is going to go over my arm. So I also am figuring out that part of this. Um, so. That'll be a time. 
basically, her body, her tail. <laughs> Immediately the props are gone. Whoop. All right, well. <laughs> basically, the tail is going to wrap around the body. So, in theory, she's on this arm. She's gonna wrap all the way around, probably around with the tail. Probably gonna be around there on the tail. Tail will then wrap around the back because I have to avoid the flowers. So, this will be a time. Someone who's made puppets and absolutely commend you. Yeah, you know what's also a fun fact? This is my fucking first puppet. I decided, yeah, you know what? I hate myself a little bit. <laughs> I'd like to suffer. So, chat. Um, I'm trying to figure out. Yeah, this is the first time I've ever made a puppet. <laughs> ever. I'm... There's a reason I'm so proud of this. It's because I've never done this before. <laughs> she's beautiful. And it's... And, and she's... I've never done it before, okay? <laughs> so now I have to decide. Do we hang out here? Do you guys want to see this or do I do like a... I can, you can watch me stuff, but I don't know here. We might, we might face cam cause it'll be mostly like chatting with me showing updates because I don't think that like watching me stuff this is gonna be the interesting part here. <laughs> You'll get updates as we talk. How's that? How's that? Okay. But I have story time for you all. So, would you guys like to hear my story time? I have D&D &D story time now. Usually it's Sherbert when we do, when craft things are happening. I think I'm funny. <laughs> I think I'm funny. So, I'm gonna switch the music. We gotta get the music vibes correct because this isn't any old D&D &D story. This is a spooky D&D &D story. <laughs> So I will, first off, we're gonna specify some things. One, this is so much polyfill. I have so much to fill. But this is a spooky D&D story. And technically it's not D&D. <laughs> technically it's not D&D. Uh, we are actually played recently uh, a game of Candela Obscura, which is made by the Critical Role team as kind of one of, um, it's a bit more like Call of Cthulhu, where it is intentionally spooky. It's a spooky game. And the basis behind Candela Obscura games are th is that each group is a known as a circle. And the circles are sent out into the world to investigate when paranormal things happen, to determine if they are a source of what's called magical bleed. So magic can bleed into the world and cause phenomenon. And the circles of Candela Obscura, the organization, go out into the world and investigate sources to find out, and then if they are magical, to contain or destroy the cause of the phenomenon. I believe that typically Candela Obscura takes place in like more of Victorian time, but Daniel is fun and cool and has decided that we do modern games. <laughs> so this is set in modern day Massachusetts. Ma ma why, did he, why did he pick that state? None of us could say it, right? <laughs> we played in a group of four. So we have four characters. My character's name was Toby. And Toby was a Kind of an uncle-like character. He was roped into Candela Obscura after, fun fact, <laughs> I used the same character that I have used in the past for when we played a Call of Cthulhu game, which was also set in the modern day. It was with a different party, but I used the same character and said that what happened in our Call of Cthulhu game is what roped him into becoming a member of Candela Obscura because typically you get recruited into Candela Obscura if you've had an incident that involved you in a phenomenon of magic and then you can sometimes be recruited into the fold. Uh, so in the past, Toby had a husband, Matt, and he did not know 
but Matt was a member of Candela Obscura. He only thought his husband was some kind of researcher, and his husband vanished under mysterious circumstances in one of his studies. But Toby didn't know that. He thought he just died in a lab accident. He has a son named Mason who's off in college, but now he's just working as a mechanic in America where they were originally from England. And our other party members were, I guess I should also kind of vaguely introduce pronouns for Toby, he, him, uh, Toby, he, him. And th you don't have classes like you do in D and D not quite. Um, there are classes, but f in my case, we use kind of a modified version of kind of what is the soldier or explorer type. It's a like, my guy was here to do some damage kind of role. I'm, I'm some, some damage role boy. Also in our party, we had a few others. Uh, we had, oh shoot, Lyra. Lyra was uh, one of the students studying under Matt. She witnessed the incident that he vanished in and has since been trying to kind of distance herself and has been a family friend to Toby. She is kind of more the role of like the smart one. <laughs> so uh, she would almost be like the intelligence build in D&D, &D. maybe a wizard type or something like that. Uh, so Professor Lyra now, she's now a professor as well. Uh, we had Werrell was what is known as kind of more of our mystic. He has some connections to, uh, magic and can kind of, he's more of a psychic, can connect two entities of magical bleed easier than the others. And then we had, oh shoot, what was, what was his name? I'm trying to think of our final character's name. Uh, Zuni. There we go. Zuni was a uh, sort of crooked cop character. Uh, he was known as what was called the, 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 both, he went for both the thief and the investigator role. So crooked cop. <laughs> uh, and basically our story starts with them getting their first assignment as a newly formed circle, the circle of gold and iron, no lead, golden lead. So, this circle gets a message that in a town three hours to the south of them is called Rockport. And Rockport is known to be a basically internet dead zone. They don't have internet there really. Uh, and you don't hear a lot of news coming in and out of Rockport. But recently something weird happened and it appears that someone or something has been killing people. It looks like a similar method to a theorized serial killer, but they can't figure it out. And there's no strong information. So our group is sent out, especially because a little weird thing with this is that Rockport, usually so anti-internet, kind of anti-technology weirdly enough has had a little bit of a recent change in that this person died in an airbnb which is new there's like a new airbnb there's new like fiber optic internet cables being laid and it's weird so they send our group out and we go down in Toby's truck, he ha he's a mechanic. They all meet up at his mechanic shop and they head down together and they get to start trying to figure out what on earth happened here. So they get down there, they meet some of the locals. There's a big lobster fishing contest happening, uh, but they get over to the Airbnbs and they start kind of snooping around. My guy, Toby straight up breaks into the house that the murder scene is at. 
<laughs> Mans just goes in and finds some funky things. But they, they're not really finding a lot. They find out that recently Comcast fiber optic internet has been installed here. And when they talk to the family who lives closest to these new Airbnb buildings, they find out that they've been having some issues with what they think and what they explain to us as rabid squirrels. <laughs> they are not fucking squirrels. <laughs> but they, they, Daisy is this lovely old woman who is convinced that these rabid squirrels um, are ruining her garden. <laughs> and these squirrels, just, you know, just very normal squirrel activity. When you hit them with a shovel, the shovel corrodes. into cubes like minecraft cube shape sh out chunk out of shovel and she's like it's a squirrel and we're all like daisy that's not a fucking squirrel <laughs> daisy no <laughs> daisy that's not a squirrel <laughs> it's it's a time um so we're like okay obviously the thing that maybe murdered someone we think is maybe this not a squirrel so we're gonna do a stakeout we're gonna we're gonna scope out what the hell uh what 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 the hell these are but first we're gonna go gather some more information we end up kind of being able to somehow lie our way into going to the police station and the coroner's office and getting the like coroner's report on this murder. And that's where things get really weird <laughs> because not only is there like, there, there's, there's no, there's, there is no standard wound. The wound that killed this man also looks like cubes has just been kind of taken out of him and it's not like it's burned or acid corrosion just gone just bits gone <laughs> and it's like huh so that's that's not mm -mm. no no that's not how that's not how people shape <laughs> um mm bad and when we get to see this we even get like we get the, we get the coroner's trust enough that he like talks to us more and reveals that the mayor has even told him not to release a statement about this because he insists that he must be wrong there must be something wrong with the equipment because even down to a microscopic level when he looks at like samples of the tissue under slides it's missing cubes and the mayor is just like that's that's what something's wrong with the technology you must be wrong do not tell anyone about this and it's like well that's sus <laughs> but okay <laughs> uh so we go prepare a stakeout with some shovels some traps some uh toby gets his gun because toby has a shotgun <laughs> and toby's like yeah fuck that <laughs> And we wait in Daisy's backyard for night to fall. And as the sun is setting, we are getting further. We are getting further. Look at how long we're getting, we're getting there. We're getting there. I'm getting place. Oh, there's still so much. Okay. It's fine. It's fine. If you're, if you, if you miss this, we're, we're filling the body of a, of a puppet while we speak about the long, the, the scary times of Candela Obscura. Uh, but yeah, as the sun is setting and darkness starts to fall, we see eyes. Oh, cat ears. Do you want the, the, the purple cute cat ears or the, or the jingly bell cat ears? Which would you like? Which one would you like? Ryan Abu. Purple. Good choice. Hydrate. Thank you. Okay, wait. 
We're going to set down the giant tube. We're going to get the cat ears. There we go. Hurrah. <laughs> the immediate switch from we're getting places to... Oh, no, there's still so much. So true. <laughs> uh, here we go. The pretty cat ears. Wah. So, night falls. The sun is setting. And... We've convinced Daisy that we're going to help her with her squirrel problem. And she's fine. She's going to let us just hang out in her backyard and wait for the squirrels. <laughs> and the squirrels roll up. Except they're not squirrels. Of course they're not squirrels. There are, in the forest, dozens of glowing eyes emerging from the shadows. Like, the shadows. And they are not even squirrel-shaped. <laughs> They are like tiny people, sort of shaped. They are tiny people shaped, running on f all four limbs, coming right at us. And something to note is that Daisy's husband, Tommy, had recently dug up the fiber optic internet cable they had laid in the ground and severed it. And all of the creatures are running towards the mound of dirt that covers the severed cable. And here, I, th I even have a little sketch. We have a little, a little sketch of the, the men, the guys. Here, wait, we'll adjust camera focus and actually show you up close, ready? There you go. Those are our dudes, our guys. They're shaped. <laughs> um, I should back up, I think. That cable, we dig out of the ground while we're waiting. We wanna see what's up, what's, what's the deal? Because when we look at the other history of uh, the serial killer murders that people thought maybe this was a part of, we notice the map of murders lines up with where Comcast has been laying fiber optic internet cable. And we're like, what the fuck? <laughs> so we dig this cable up. And as these creatures are starting to encircle us and come towards the house, I pull the cable out of the ground. Except in the end of the fiber optic cable, are muscle fibers. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> so all these creatures are coming at us and we're like, okay, Toby, it's time to get out of the fucking hole. <laughs> and they start closing in. And we start to realize that these creatures, as we chuck stuff at them, and as they start enclosing and they, 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 we move out of the way and they all swarm into the hole that we just dug the cable out of. They fill the hole like they were almost a liquid. Something happens. We think they communicate with it. And then they spread out from the hole. They start spreading out. They go, like, go in the hole, and then they go out of the hole in a perfect circle. And they start spreading out perfectly because they're looking for something. They're looking for something from the hole. And that's when we have to start fighting them because they are going, uh, like, out. And that out includes where people are. The house that Daisy and Tommy live in and the Airbnbs that have families living in them right now uh, are all nearby. So uh, Lyra goes and wakes up Daisy and Tommy. And I think I'm unfocused my camera attached one second. And... Nope, I'm hit. Come on. There we go. Um, so... 
She goes and wakes them up. Toby puts himself between the creatures and the Airbnb. But we all know that when these things touch you, bad shit happens. So we start trying to defend. And we find out that these creatures are stopped by matter. That, like, dense matter. But they aren't stopped. They phase through things. And when they phase through something, the denser it is, the smaller these weird human squirrels become. So if hit them with a shovel, the shovel disintegrates, but the creature shrinks. And you can shrink them into nothingness. They'll, like, vanish if you hit them with enough mass. So... Uh, my gun does very little in helping this because shotgun pellets don't have enough mass to do much. So the f everyone wakes up when they hear Toby unload five shotgun blasts into the mass of squirrels, um, which is a time. <laughs> it's very spooky. And Weryl, our kind of psychic man best at communicating with cr things, uh, communicates with the creatures. He manages to make a connection and sense what happened when they murdered the man. <laughs> the recent death. They remember sinking in, sneaking, they remember getting into the house. They remember feeling a source of energy that they were hungry, they needed to recharge. They were seeking this energy and when they jumped for it, something got in the way. And they destroyed the thing in the way. And then they went towards the energy source. The thing in the way was the man. <laughs> the thing in the way was the man. And the energy source was the modem to the fiber optic internet. <laughs> um, so that was scary. <laughs> so we're like, okay. So these things definitely... Something is fucking sus as hell about the... Fiber optic muscle internet. <laughs> um, we're all like, s definitely like, these things are fucking weird. They, something's up with them. They're weird. Uh, but we're like fighting them. We're doing our best. We're doing decently fighting them and we're getting people to safety. And then Weryl has a very interesting role. Because in Candela Obscura, you don't have like, it basically, you fail a roll, you partially succeed, or you, like, fully succeed. So on a mixed success, Weryl has a very interesting thing happen when he communicates with something. If he gets a full success, he asks a question, and he gets an answer. If he loses, the entity asks a question, and he must answer. And on a partial success... Both get to ask and both get to answer a question. And he rolls a partial success on asking, what do you want? And the entity asks back something that the rest of us don't get to know. But Weryl asks, what do you want? And as we are stationed about, Lyra and Zuni are trying to help get people to safety. Weryl has communed with the creatures and whatever is controlling them. And Toby is between the creatures and the people at the Airbnbs. And Weryl's head suddenly shoots up and he shouts as these creatures are swarming towards Toby and he's unloading his gun and he's reloading his gun rapidly and he shouts at his friend, Toby... They're after you. And I'm just like, what the fu- And Daniel, Daniel is the DM for this game. Ends the first session there. <laughs> but good news. We've had the second session since. <laughs> and this was a two-shot game. So we end on Toby, they're after you. <laughs> and it's just like, what the fuck? <laughs> Great. Awesome. I have no idea why creatures wanting to do with the fiber optic internet want anything to do with me. But okay. 
Um, hate that. We start off the second session with trying to figure out how to save people still. We're still fighting. We get through a lot of them. And then something kind of bad happens. One of the creatures, I don't succeed my role well enough. And I don't get, like, I don't, like, take, like, massive damage. But one of them brushes up against Toby. And as soon as one of them touches Toby, every single one of the squirrel creatures left, where they were spreading out in a perfect circle, all look directly at Toby. And they all start going at him. <laughs> Crap! Um, I have another. I have another little sketch that I did that was just all of the creatures from the forest suddenly turning and coming back at us. Um, a bunch of my friends go for the car. They go for the car. They're like, "Fuck that shit." Uh. Uh. Um, that's bad. We need to maybe get Toby out of here. And Toby's like, no, fuck that. If they're going to follow, if they follow us, that will be really, 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 really bad. <laughs> um, oh, okay. Wait, I got to get horns on. I got to get horns on. So friends get in the car. I'm still trying to fend them off and it's terrible all around. My friend... Weryl comes up and tries to help defend me, but I'm like, dude, you suck ass at punching things. I'm going to punch better than you. Um, but basically, as all these creatures are coming in, we try to commune again. And we try and ask, like, what do you want with me? I, I, I scream at the creatures, like, what do you want with me? And they tell me a very strange thing they say they want me and I'm like cool you have me you have my attention what do you want what do you want with me and these creatures say we want you to go to London London is where Toby used to live with his husband where his husband went missing investigating a different source of bleed magical bleed and Toby is like what the fuck <laughs> but okay sure and they're like will you come to London he says sure and this is where things start getting really weird because like we were just thinking that this would be like a weird one-off thing or like a small thing we could contain. And the DM also wasn't prepared. Daniel was not prepared. Let me move my polyfill one moment. For us to just go straight for the source of this phenomenon. He actually had to rewrite part of the story while we took a break for lunch. <laughs> um, but as we are like, how the hell are we going to do this? Uh, there's an incident with, you know, my friends using the truck. They hit the rest of the squirrels. They fuck up my truck because the squirrels eat through mass. I have to fix it. And then we have to go find an airplane. <laughs> but the weirdest thing happens. When we look up, like, how do we get from Massachusetts to London? How are we going to do that? When we look on our phones, when we look online, every ticket to London goes to zero dollars. We buy zero dollar tickets. Every upgrade, zero dollars. Okay. When we show up at the airport, it's like a billionaire just showed up. There are people there waiting. They skip us through the line. The As we are driving towards the airport, it said that it was going to be like uh our flight was supposed to take off at 1 p.m we're driving there and as we're driving there and we're gonna get there before you know 1 p.m the time of the flight changes it's gonna be at 11 a.m and then when we get closer it's gonna be at 10 a.m 
The plane takes off almost the minute that we get there. It's weird. While we're in the airport, we get like new SIM cards to go uh, to go international SIM card stuff because you need those when you're international. You can need some international, uh, you know, things for your phone, stuff like that. And wait, where is the end of my puppet? Where, where did you go? Where did the end of this tube go? There it is. I found it. Um, it's a really weird sensation of like everything is whatever wants Toby to go to London has a massive amount of control over the internet. And we get there and we're like, now what do we do? We get to, you know, a different continent. Um, and we're like, you know what? It seems to be in control. Just open Google Maps. It immediately starts routing us there to somewhere. And we follow it. And it takes us to a data farm, like a big server farm. And we're like, okay. <laughs> what the fuck? Big, big server farm. We get in by holding up our phones to the keypads. And it just unlocks. Like this thing wants us to come. Um... And we go in, and the server farm is weird. It, it's, it's, we get in there, and Lyra starts looking around on, like, what's going on. And we look at the server racks, and the server racks are kind of contained within a glass box, a big glass box, because it's supposed to be, a, like, a controlled clean room space where... You, they control how much dust and stuff is in there so that the servers operate at like the perfect temperature and the perfect dust conditions and stuff. Um, and normally it's very clean and nice in there. We can see it's full of condensation, like something hot and wet is inside. We go in. Toby and Werrell go into the server farm area and they open the door and you know how there were muscle fibers in the internet cable this entire server rack is strung up with muscle and like bone <laughs> and eyes that look at us it's so gross. It's so like, oh no, what the fuck? Um, yeah, it's, it's spooky. <laughs> and we're like, hi, we're here. What do you want? Weird thing. And... I ask, we're here, what do you want? And the voice that answers back is Toby's husband, Matt, says, you, Toby. I want to see you with my own eyes. Come further into the room. <laughs> and I roll to decide if Toby is going to try and like resist this or if he's going to listen. Um, and I fail my roll. So he's not going to fight it. <laughs> he's not going to fight it. And he goes in to the room. And his friend Werrell is like, dude, do not fucking go in the room, man. What the hell? Um, but he goes in the room. And he... Oh, 
opens one of the server racks and strung up in all the weird body mass is the face of Matt. <laughs> and some background context that we got to learn while on the flight from America to London, Toby had a feeling that this had to do with Matt. And so he got to ask Lyra, what really happened in London when Matt died? And she says, they were trying to investigate ways to measure bleed, magical bleed. They were looking at frequencies when suddenly something reacted violently when they found one. And there was kind of a blast. And Mark was hit and immediately gone. And wounds on other students there looked like the ones in the coroner's report where they were missing cubes out of them. And Toby goes up and asks Mark what's going on. Why, why are you doing this? And Toby gets his answer. And Matt says, I've been looking for you. I've been trying to reach you. It just, you moved so far away. Sorry, Matt, not Mark. <laughs> My apologies, Matt gets his answer uh, and he, Matt says I want to, us to be together again we can be together forever like this and we can have Mason with us forever we'll never be separated again While this is happening, there is a creature that is outside the server racks. Because outside the server racks, Lyra and Zuni are trying to get this thing shut down. They're trying to break stuff. They're trying to overheat it. They're trying to mess with it. And you know how the squirrel things were person-shaped? Well, now a full-sized fucking person one is outside and is starting to go after our friends. The little boop of the alert box. <laughs> so big, big, big boy now is coming around and trying to mess with our friends. And remember, these things touch stuff and just delete shit. So, danger, da danger, danger creature. <sighs> we go back to Toby, talking to his husband. And Weryl tries again. Green ears, let me grab the feathered ears before I continue. <laughs> That's not a green ear. That's just red. Where's the burb? There's the burb. There's one. Where's my other pesky burb? Ah, there it is. It's way in the back. Here we go. Uh, Weryl asks the creature, are you really Mark? Not Mark, Matt, jeez. Are you really Matt? And Matt answers. I used to be. And like I said, Toby failed his role to resist. And yeah, mythos and magic is haunting me, exactly. <laughs> um. 
But Toby won't stand for his son getting pulled into this. Mason is off in college having a good time right now. And when they were on the plane, Toby left a voicemail for Mason saying that something had come up in London that had to do with his dad. And that he was going to go take a look and he wasn't sure when he was going to be home. And as he's talking to Matt, Mason calls him back and says like, oh my God, dad, I'm sorry I missed your call. You said it had something to do with like pop what, what's going on. And Matt is like, is that Mason? Can I talk to him? And there's something very wrong with Toby's husband and he can see it. He knows. He's also been away from his husband for a very long time. The incident with Matt happened a while ago. Like, a, I think we said somewhere between five and 10 years. And Toby offers him a deal. You can have me. I'll be with you. But... You have to leave Mason alone. Our son deserves to live his life. <sighs> and Matt doesn't really like that answer. But they're running out of time. And they know that Matt's reach is massive. Literally cross continental cross the atlantic ocean he could go after them if they leave him here he says tells toby if you want to be with me all you have to do is kiss me and i am like sobbing my eyes out at this point in the game i am crying because I know what Toby's going to do. Toby leans in and kisses his husband. And Toby vanishes. And the creature outside is trying to fight our friends. They are trying to and destroy the server racks by overheating the system. And as we're going around the table, at first, you know, we'll figure out, like, Lyra, what are you doing? Zuni, what are you doing? Weryl, what are you doing? And Daniel goes to skip me because my character has just died. And I say, wait. Because... Matt is controlling those creatures. Toby has just become one with Matt. So I ask, can I control the creatures now? And we do a contest of wills. And we see if Toby can overpower Matt. And he can. And he takes the creature and he turns it away from his friends and he has a walk forward. He has to stick its arm out and start dragging it through the server rack that makes up Matt's heart. And Matt screams in pain and Toby knows that it hurts, but he as the room is overheating, as the fans are going, and his friends are fleeing, Toby destroys both of them before the building bursts into flames. And that's where we ended our session. <laughs> it was brutal. <laughs> 
It was so freaking brutal. Oh, it is very intense. Yeah, yeah, no. Candela Obscura is not something that most parties live through. <laughs> um, what happens to his son? I have said that if we're going to play another uh, one shot of Candela Obscura, I will play as Mason, who will now join in the search for what the hell happened to his dad's. Uh, his son is an orphan now. He is an adult orphan, at least. <laughs> his son's in college. But yeah. Oh. I was crying so hard when it happened. Um, I'm very used to, at this point, like, playing characters. So I, like, got way too into it and was just, like, sobbing. And the DM is my husband, so, of course, Daniel's like, are you, uh, did I, I'm so sorry. <laughs> if more happens, absolutely, I'll share more D&D &D stories. But, oh, my God. Yeah. I, oh, as soon as I worked out that it was going to be Matt, he didn't tell Mason he was going to be home soon. He told Mason he wasn't sure when he was going to be back. Because he knew there was a chance that he might not be back. And it's just like, ah! <laughs> yep yep anyways guys um i finished stuffing the tube <laughs> i finished i finished stuffing the tube <laughs> oh. <laughs> i have an 11 foot puppet body now <laughs> <laughs> Shall we see how it wraps around the dress? <laughs> we'll switch on the happy music. Um, we'll go switch on the happy music. It's fine. I'll take off my headphones, which means I'll take off the props as well for a second. Yeah. Raw. <laughs> when you make a horrific one shot, it becomes actually horrific. Yeah. Why is it so long? Because that's how long the puppet is. Mm. Okay. So, in theory, first off thing I want to test is how good the size of the body is to the head. Which, go over here. If we do a little, like, hit. Okay, yeah, that's actually pretty good. Like, Size-wise, the diameter is right. She that's cursed. That's cursed looking. This is cursed. <laughs> yeah, here, here's the horrific D and D, and then um, have this cursed dragon. <laughs> oh no. Okay. So in theory, a lot of this won't actually. The upper half of this won't be stuffed with polyfill because it will need to have my arm so if we have my entire arm here and then it would wrap around me like probably like this oh whoa okay yeah we're probably gonna have to wrap her like that and the tail will come back around to be basically where the flowers are Oh, this is going to be a time. Okay, so she's going to she's going to sit like here. Okay. She's going to sit like this. And Oh, what a time. <laughs> I'm being hugged by a snake this entire this entire cosplay. Uh this will be wild. The good thing is, is that when it's actually like wrapped around me, one of the things I wanted to test with like a test puppet is, cause this isn't the actual material that she'll be made out of. Um, I wanted to see how badly she like wrinkles and you can see there is some creasing, but it's not as bad as I was worried about, which is nice, <laughs> but she's going to be like this and then we'll have the head. I almost might have the neck come in narrowest. Oh wait, there will be a giant mane over this part. So you won't even see that. Okay. 
Because she has... <gasps> Big floof. <laughs> That's a horrific color that I will be fixing. <laughs> because I don't like it. It's not... It's like too yellow. Oh, it looks really yellow on screen. It looks better in person, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. Who am I cosplaying again? The dragon from Tears of the Kingdom. <laughs> Rar. <laughs> but yeah, comfortably have to have the arm low as well as a high. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> uh, we'll simply die if can't lower arm. <laughs> okay, wait, I need to take off my cosplay props real quick. Ugh, I'm tangled. I'm tangled now. Yeah. Huh. But the nice thing is I can now use this pla like test puppet as a method to measure out what part of the fabric I will need for both the top and lower part because her belly and her like body are different fabric types. Thank you for the hydrate. I need that. <laughs> the good thing is that right now she's super lightweight. The head is super lightweight, which is really good. But yeah, definitely going to need to be able to rest my arm nicely. And it'll be interesting to see how, if I can get her to kind of sit on my shoulder happily, or if I'll need to like lower, if I'll, if, if it'll be weird, but hmm. So chat, how we feeling? <laughs> how we feeling chat? <laughs> Oh, would you guys like a little like, now that we did that, would you guys like a tour of uh, craft updates? Would you guys like a tour of craft updates now? Are you going to make the puppet completely detachable from the dress? Yes. <laughs> yes, I am. I'm theoretically going to be doing magnets so that I can also take her off and on so that it's not so heavy <laughs> but yeah am i going to vidcon no <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> okay i am going to grab the bunny ears yes ba -ba 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 -ba. Do -do 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 -do. Rah. but yes shall we go say hi on craft smp hmm? <laughs> As of making up for the sad, sad D&D D story I just told. <laughs> uh, I really said, what if I tell them this horrifyingly sad D&D story? Sherbert tells them happy, funny stories, and I'm just like, here, have the horrors. <laughs> ah, my ears. Please. 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 There we go. Yeah. 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 Okay. You know, one of these days, we will talk about the entire world I built for Mythos and Magic as well. Just saying. One day we will. Oh, well, I don't need to say alerts meter during lore. We are not in lore. <laughs> and I will turn the alerts on again. <laughs> Boop. Okay. Do, 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 do. Is it dark out? I don't want it to be dark out. Let it not be night. Sir, I'm going to need you to scooch. Oh, well, sir, that's quite rude of you. <laughs> okay. Let us show you guys. Oh, hey, look, I have villagers now. It was awful to get them. <laughs> I had a terrible time. But look, we have an entire village. Ayo, ayo, look at this. We have all these villagers. Also, I have gone and color coded our cats and dogs. Teehee. Yeah, it yeah, Art got to listen to me just cursing to high heavens. Uh yes, sir. <laughs> As I had to transport men, they were awful. But yes, we have added I added guys, look at this. I just I I just added this. It has a single fish. Little fish. Little guy. <laughs> But here, I'll even, boop. We have this whole area as our village. We have 
do 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 a lovely flower garden in the center it was a pond originally but it or a fountain and i didn't like it i made <laughs> i made i made a little dog house i thought it was cute tee -hee. <laughs> and then back here we have this is the village breeder house <laughs> there's some guys up here they make more guys I see you have an extra guy now. I mean, if that's what you're into, I'm not gonna shame you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we have, um. so instead of better dogs, uh, I have a better animations on so that the animals are a little bit more like lively. So they like lick their little paws and they wag their little tails and sometimes they'll lay down <laughs> and they're so good. I get the villagers from village. So I got them from, so Bit has a village. Look at, look at them. Look at them. I love them. I love them so much. They just flop. Look at them with their little tails. Um. Yeah, it's, 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 it's from free. Look, I'm, I'm silly and I'm silly, okay? I'm silly. Means print and poly. <laughs> That's fun. Okay, all the pets are named for uh, Avatar the Last Airbender creatures. So, Zuko's dragon, the moon, and the ocean spirit. <laughs> uh, and I thought it would be funny if I named the fish after the swim, swim anime, okay? I thought it would be silly. I only have one, but I thought it would be silly, okay? It was my special interest in college, okay? <laughs> It's my favorite avatar. I don't know. I do like Aang a lot, but I think, um, oh, that is a hard choice, actually. Hmm. 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 The fact that you knew. Yeah, that's rude. That's rude of you for knowing. How dare you? Uh, but yeah, I did that. Have I done, have I added anything else lately? I don't know. I think, I think I've already shown you all, like, the snail and things. I think, I don't think I've added, to, I think I spent so long on these guys. I think I've spent so long on these guys. Yeah, your snail is wonderful. The fishing snail. Yep, the fishing snail. It's a great time. Could have just been fishing while telling that terribly sad story. <laughs> oh. But yeah, we have, we have stuff. I want to like, keep expanding i just need to keep figuring out like what to expand you know um i might i might start going this way but i'm not entirely sure what i'm gonna put there yet have they seen the bits you made me which bits what bits what things oh no i'm not sure <gasps> they have not they have not seen your wings you're not online, loser. <laughs> You're not online, fool. <laughs> you, ah, there we go. Okay. Shall we go say hi? Come on. Let's go find the wizard. I zoom over here. I screech at you. I screech. You're not in your... How are you not in your library? What the hell? Ah, uh, rah, rah. How dare I'm you? I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I will, I will take it back. Ra, ra. Whoa. Wait, wait. I'm not gonna look at you until I'm ready. Okay. Are you ready? Are you guys ready? Are you ready? You want to see these wings? I love them. <laughs> Boom. Look at these. Look wings. at these iridescent look butterfly how wings. Cool they are. They're so good. I have Me butterfly wings. I love, so them. I love them. I love them. In the little double layers. Mm -hmm. The double layers. So so, look mm -hmm. like, I don't know if you see better. I'm crouching or not. But like, yeah, you, you do. The... It's good. It's good. It's good. So fun fact, chat. Uh, from my lovely Patreons, I do a monthly raffle to create a custom texture pack item. Ow. <gasps> this is so pretty. That's why I was coming over. I was like, look at my, I've met, this is for axolotls. Um, I love it. I'm breeding I love a bunch it. of them because I want a blue one real bad. <laughs> oh, good, good. And I, I actually made it safe. It's all. Oh, yes. Eggs. Good. They can't get out. Good, good. So many guys. I, uh, wait, okay, wait. I was in the middle of saying a thing. Um, Go ahead. With my, with my lovely Patreons, uh, 
I make like cool books and things. Last the last one I did, I made a cool set of butterfly wings. And then I was like, I want butterfly wing things now. What the hell? These are so cool. And then you asked for butterfly wings, and I was like, perfect. I was like, I'm I gonna have, steal the like, shapes I made and change wings. the colors, <laughs> and it's great. I love them. It's very good. It's very good. Very good. Tiki. <laughs> But I have Gee. this. I have my I love library. it. The library, which totally did not partially burn to the ground. <laughs> oh my god, it burned down one day and it was so upsetting. <laughs> yeah, you thought Only someone stole from you and I was like, I was no, like, no, dang. it you burned. Take my, my library things, guys. You didn't have to do that. It's not done. We're, we're, we're cooking. Tee hee. I mean, when I have a big mystical library for all mm, my mm. magics and whatnot. I love it. Ah. I love it. I love it. You win. But yeah. This is what happened while my TVs were, uh, while I was recovering. I <laughs> oh, yeah. So a good chunk of like my recovery process was me being on craft muted because I couldn't mm -hmm. say anything and it would just say words at me. It was just me talking <laughs> while you were like, just being that's quiet. That's I heard about the villager nonsense mm -hmm. because I would just hear your plights mm -hmm. and your suffering. I <laughs> like, was raging. Like fishing mm -hmm. or like making bookshelves and you're, mm -hmm. just, you're just raging because the men yeah. are rude and I'm just like... Yeah, it's because, fun silent. fact chat, did you know that villagers won't go through a nether portal if they're in a minecart? A minecart will go through another <laughs> portal. A villager will go through a portal. But if you put them together, no. I can hear the suffering in your voice. Mm. <laughs> like you're getting war flags. Mm. <laughs> I hated it. I hated it. It's it's Rar. Upsetting. But yeah. yeah. Anyways, um, I was just showing them my little my little updates, my little guys, my little I things. Like yeah, like they are so annoying to transport. I agree. Yeah, oh. Okay, actually, my little spot from here. Wow, this is so cute. Look at that. Yeah. Look at that, chat. Like the aesthetic going on between the two of these places. Right, right. It's so good. It's so good. You just look over. You just go on the bridge and you either see cool mm. wizard tower or just like fucking floating ships and all. It's all pink and mm -hmm. vibes all around. Mm -hmm. I love it. Good idea. content. It's good so content. Aesthetic. Maybe mm. something here in the middle. I'll get that one day. We'll make one day. On. <laughs> one day. I've started <laughs> making our terrain less terrible between us. I started, I, I had, like terrains. made like a little hill to like mm -hmm. start terraining yeah. towards each other. Because we, we have just the forgot. weirdest guys. It's so weird. I got wings and then I just kind of forgot. <laughs> 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 like I went, I went to go get a light drop. First, mm -hmm. At one point, I think you were still building and I hit grind error art where mm -hmm. I needed to go get a light drop. I needed to get yep. full diamond armor. I, needed, I, yep. I was in the, <laughs> the end. It was a whole mm -hmm. journey. And then I came back uh. and for you, little Uzi, more wings. Mm -hmm. I came back oh, yeah. Many. I freaking... Part of the frustration with the villager thing was um, the villagers that I got... Uh, happened to be at Bits Village, which also acts as an iron farm. And yeah, um, part of the iron farm to get, you know, to kill the iron golems has these lava spots. Mm -hmm. Which I was flying by the village mm -hmm. and got caught in one of the lava spots by accident and then couldn't escape it and then nearly died. Oh, well, I did die and then nearly oh. lost my stuff. I lost my wings. Most so of the rest of it thing. went into the uh hoppers that collects mm -hmm. the iron and luckily like saved most of my stuff but oh uh. it was just me running it was oh. me like hey now i'm gonna you're just like mm -hmm. no and i was like i was like get it and i flew so fast mm -hmm. to go grab everything on the ground and the only thing was the wings that yep was, like gone and, I was, and like, then i was like you know what this is a moment that we say that's enough yeah, minecraft you, you for now i think you're doing fanfic shooting that day mm-hmm right? Yeah, and you were like, I gotta go, and I was like, okay, and then I went to the end, and I got mm -hmm. so many more wings. Because <laughs> uh, uh. it was mean. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. It was brutal. Scary. It was brutal. But, uh, anyways, what a time. Look at this little bench. It's adorable. Let me up. There we go. You gotta, you gotta fight a little bit to get up here. <laughs> yeah, look, look, they can be gay. Look at them. Look, look at them, this. they can be gay. Cannon behavior. Look at them. Wow. Yeah. Wow, wow! Look at them, Them. They're so mystical. They're, <laughs> they're, both, they're somehow the same and different aesthetics at the same Rah. time, and I think that's so delightful of them. Gays, yeah. Look at that, gay people. Gay people. For real, they're real. I, mm. I bet mm. you didn't. I bet you didn't know about that one. Right? Shock! Wow. Mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. but yeah, no. See, 
We just get to be gay on all the servers, and it's funny. <laughs> it's gay, and it's lovely. Well, one of them, were, they're cooking. <laughs> they're cooking on it, and they're struggling with that. Jesus God, Christ, they, they are struggling. They are they are having <laughs> such a little time. Poor chat. It's just mm -hmm. foaming at the mouth with every interaction. Oh, <laughs> every oh. every word spoken. Every time. It's like, bruh. Every time. Please. Why are they like this? Tee hee. Womp womp. But then we get little cute things like Baby Jade. Baby Jade. Baby Jade. Baby Jade. I love I Baby think Jade. It's funny because since Ray and Feminists were never like in, originally intended to be a mm -hmm. thing and were not a thing for most, most all of the things. Like it mm -hmm. wasn't until like a pretty soon before we started it, we were like, oh. Oh, no, oh, they've been gay, gay this whole time. What made mm. Mm. Rune and Vast more upsetting is that we had ideas mm -hmm. too soon. Yep. <laughs> so now we and have to be like, we have suffering. to pace ourselves. Damn. It's okay, chat. We're suffering with you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, You're mm -hmm. not alone. Oh, we know. So true. Ugh. Ugh. So true. But speaking of bound, guys, I just want to do the pick her stream. I just we gotta guys, we gotta pick guys, your screen. I want to do the picker. Okay, so here here's the thing. Here's the thing. <laughs> mm -hmm. So our, our our one of our things is like, oh, you're not feeling so great. Pick crews. You know, pick crews. Pick crew. Hey, he'll give it to me. And then I was like, for you, little Uzi, you should mm -hmm. invest in this. And then it just yep. started a train for the next yep. like three hours where we just kept finding new pick crews and mm -hmm. Vast and Rune and other characters and and Ray and everyone and new pick crews and we found mm -hmm. so many and now we have like too many. Now we have like, so if many. We get a stream. We could get others and like make mm -hmm. so many for Val. Yep. Because they're birds and there's so mm -hmm. many good birds. It's good. There's so many it's good pickers good wings. Y'all don't even yes. know there's so many pickers with wings. Rar. Yes. It's I wonderful. am the number one advocate for this. Personally. <laughs> Personally. <laughs> mm -hmm. okay. Personally. I think you. I, mm -hmm. I want it. Yep. I want it. <laughs> me. Hey, guess what? Give it to me now. <laughs> Weird Bookie has granted your wish. <laughs> <laughs> Weird Bookie. Yippee. Everybody give me a yippee for Weird Bookie. What a, what a, what a trooper. They, they out here oh. providing for me specifically who wants to see oh, the bound pictures. Oh, my God. Stream. It's me. It's no one else. Sorry, mm -hmm. everyone else. Mm -hmm. it's, it's I'm the number one fan. Oh, okay. Yippee. Well, then pick her stream. I don't know. Maybe we do that tomorrow or something. I don't know. Hmm. 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 We will. I'll poke you. I'll poke you. I'll poke you. Mm -hmm. I guess now I'm probably gonna send these these guys out to the moth athon, the olive athon. Oh there we go. I love when someone has a subathon and we're like, ah, I don't even consider where to raid. You right? I don't even need to think about it. Woohoo! I can just go. <laughs> you just send them. You can just send them. So can. chat, <laughs> I'm gonna send you. Wait, I'm gonna say say goodbye, Art. Bye. <laughs> okay. Boop. And then we're gonna and then we're gonna boop. And then we're gonna boop. Sup. <laughs>